<laughs> First question. Okay. Well, first of all, hello to everyone in Japan. This is Tristan from Azora Festival in Hungary 2023. And you can probably hear from my voice, I've had a good time. It's been amazing. I played my set yesterday in the afternoon. The sun was blazing down. There were thousands of people there and we celebrated psychedelic culture, life, and being together under the stars and getting cosmic. It has been incredible, as always. But every year they manage to raise the bar and reach new levels of amazingness. So I'm really, really happy, basically, yeah. Second question, okay. How is my life at the moment, I've been asked. So, I'm happy. I am very, very happy. I'm, one, the best thing about happiness is it presents itself. Happiness is very evident when you see people around you. Like when I'm on the dance floor and you see happy people. They look healthy, they look vibrant. And, and I find when I'm happy, my creativity flows, my relationships are going well, and my opportunities in my music, my business, my, you know, my, my family life, everything is abundant and flowing, so I'm in a good place right now. And that has kind of come from the lockdown period where we had a year and a half locked in our homes. I wrote a new album of music. I spent time with my family. I mean, I spend time in Goa every year, three or four months. I unplug from the system, I go to India, I sit on the beach and I do nothing for three or four months and I let, I fill the vessel of my, my spiritual creative being. So for me to do that in England was natural, was normal for me to do that. So it wasn't such a big deal. Obviously the, the, the crisis that was happening was, was traumatic. But for me personally, on my own journey, it was amazing. I felt growth, I felt uh, grounding, and and I felt connection with those people really, really close to me. So it was amazing. And from that, I feel like a lotus flower in bloom opening, and I'm ready to play that music to the world, and particularly to Japan when I come and play there in the end of October, beginning of November. I can't wait to see everyone there. I'm talking your kinetic fit, make it as long or short as you want, but when I start, I know. Right? Better too long than too short. Long. I can't stop myself yeah. anyway. <laughs> you ask me a big question about how's my life, it's not going to happen in one sentence. Okay. reading the question here. <laughs> Japan and the Koenji Cave. Yes, I'm coming to play the Koenji Cave. They are celebrating 15 years, their anniversary, and I have the honor and privilege of coming to present my music to them and you guys. And I'm very, very excited. I used to come to Japan a lot and just recapping the question here. I want to get it right for you guys. Uh, I used to come to Japan a lot and now it's less often. But when I do come, it's very, very special. So I'm very excited to come. Okay, well, I've been asked something about the, uh, the progression of my music through my life. You know, that's a big question. But I used to be a drummer, jazz drummer, until I discovered rave music, electronic music in, the, in 1988. When I was 18, I was there. I left school right at the birth of rave music. Boom! I was in the golden sweet spot of being in the right place at the right time. I was hooked by the electronic music bug and I threw my drumsticks away. That was it. I hit the dance floor. From there, I started DJing. From the DJing, I started producing. And I think I went to Goa in the early 90s. I, from rave and jungle and all that kind of electronic music, I discovered Goa trance. 
and that was the turning point in my life. 1993, on the beach in Goa, had my mind blown, and since then it's just been a, it's been like the side of, of uh, Mount Fuji, like this. Smooth curve all the way up to the snowy peaks at the top, and here we are, still blasting. <laughs> <laughs> you are a storyteller. Oh. Wow. So. Um, what do I think about the scene in Japan? Obviously, the Psytrance scene in Japan. There have been some big changes since the late 90s and the kind of, let's say, the golden era of the early 2000s when there were parties for 10, 12,000 people regularly coming to Japan two, three times a year and, you know, mega, mega times. Things did kind of go down, but they always do in, in places. Scenes go down, they come back up and they undulate. And it's like kind of mycelium mushroom. The scene in Japan goes down, it pops up in Mexico. It uh, goes, you know, pops up in England, it comes down in Europe. It's like that, so we ebb and flow, but we are a global network, a community, and we cross-pollinate. And that's why these international festivals are really important. So anyone there, I urge you to come to these international ones and experience this because they are magical and you won't experience anything like this anywhere else on the planet. But in Japan, I, the scene got smaller, but it became like a grassroots movement, back to just the core, the people that really, really were living this scene and this consciousness. And that is incredible for me. I would rather be doing parties, small parties for dedicated, switched on people who want to evolve than massive events for people who don't quite know what the whole thing's about. Um, you know, it's, it's important to do both. But my, my point is that I think it's at a really important moment in the scene in Japan where things can grow and flourish and become something really magical and amazing again. So come and be a part of that. And I'll see you there end of October beginning of November, Koenji Cave, love from Tristan.